and we are live. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are joining us from. This is the very first episode of Realist Convos with Sewa. And here you are going to be hearing very honest conversations about life and living. My name is Sewa Mpafo and I am your host for tonight. Realist Convos is brought to you by Sewa Mpafo Consulting. And if you're feeling the heat of the high cost of living today, and you maybe you want to earn multiple streams of income, maybe you're tired of living paycheck to paycheck each month, um, then yeah, Sewa Mpafo Consulting is here for you. You can contact us and we will help you to set up your own digital business. Yes, your very own. We have a proven system that allows you to earn on the side, hustle free. So yeah, feel free to contact us and we are being sponsored by Sewa Ampafo Consulting. Right, so tonight I have two amazing guests who are joining us and I will bring them onto the studio right now. Welcome Dr. Victor Se Kujo. And Hi, welcome, Mrs. Jennifer Adu. Hi, everyone. Thank you. Thank you both so much for joining us tonight. And today, uh, we are going to be actually going beyond the hype. I mean, there's so much hype about Abruchi, Abruchi, for those of us who are from Ghana, um, just living abroad, moving away from your home country to go and yeah. seek for greener pastures elsewhere. And today we are going to be talking about the realities of living abroad and actually how to navigate living abroad and especially cross-cultural differences. Because once you start to, to, to move away from the, the things that you are familiar with, you realize that there are so many differences and how do you navigate all of that? And tonight we are very privileged to have these two people joining us and I will leave it to them to introduce themselves, to tell us a little about themselves and then we will get the ball rolling. So I will start with Jenny. They say that's ladies first. So the ball is in your cause. Please tell us a little bit about yourself. Okay, okay, okay. Thank you so much, Sarah. I'm so grateful to be here. I feel pumped. Um, my name is Jennifer Adu. I'm a full-time mom, a full-time worker. I work as a document management administrator with the NHS and I am a digital business owner, a proud digital business owner and mentor. I'm in the UK with my family, originally from Ghana, but here we are seeking for greener pastures. So, you know, it is what it is. <laughs> Thank you for having me here. And I hope you all stay glued to your seat and enjoy the conversation. Thank you, Jenny. Thank you so much. And yes, Jenny and I are part of a global business community. Thank you so much. Dr. Sekujo, the ball is in your court now. Can yeah, you thank you very much, Sewa. So as she's mentioned, my name is Victor Sekujo from Ghana. Um, I've been living in uh, Italy and then in Netherlands, I think for the past how many years now? Maybe nine years and over, yeah? Yeah. So it's quite a pleasure, you know, being on this platform today to have some kind of realist conversations with you about living abroad, challenges, and well, that depends on the questions that the host is going to ask. But I'll be happy to gladly share my experiences and uh, yeah. issues around living abroad and how to make it, you know, work for you. So it's a pleasure being on the platform today, and I look forward to having a good chat with you all. Thank you. Thank you so much. And I see that people are joining us live. If you are joining us, you are very welcome. This is Realist Convos with Sewa, and I am here with Victor and Jenny. So we'll just get right into it. I would ask first, um, Victor, if you can just tell us a little about just your migration journey. You just already told us that you've lived outside of your home country for about close to nine years. Um, yeah, first of all, where did you move from and where are you living at the moment? Just a little bit about um, just your, your moving abroad. Okay, so I think after um, my bachelor program at Kenyan University, I studied development plan at Kenyan University. I had a chance to study for a scholarship in Italy. 
Okay. So that was in Milan for two years. So I moved away after a year. You know, after in Ghana, after the, um, the bachelor, you do the national service, compose national service. Yeah. So after the national service, I had a scholarship and then I moved to Milan to do my master's for two years. So yeah, that took quite a while, you know, trying to navigate myself in a country, speaking a different language, people mm-hmm. don't understand what you're saying. Yeah. The worst part is getting lost in a train station and nobody <laughs> being able to help you, you know, find your way home because oh, nobody dear. understands you and you don't understand anybody. So you just mm-hmm. keep going around the blocks or the blocks that look the same everywhere, <laughs> getting yourself lost and figuring things out for yourself before you can go home. After the master two years, I also had the chance to study uh, in the Netherlands to do my PhD. So that's where I spent most of my time. I think about five, six years doing my PhD in economics and of governance. Following that, then I stayed to lecture in the University of Maastricht. Maastricht is quite a small town in the Netherlands, but quite a fun place to have your education. So if you're here, I would encourage you to look it up and maybe, you know, try it out. There are a lot of opportunities out there, especially from the education perspective that you can always explore. So mm-hmm. basically, that's my journey from Ghana to uh, Milan, and then you know, much of my stay in the Netherlands adding up to about nine years. It's been more of an education journey for me. Great. Yeah, awesome, awesome. Thank you so much for sharing. And Jenny, how has yours been like? <laughs> so, my journey is just so dramatic. <laughs> so. I'm sure people are, are curious to hear it. Yeah, so mine is so dramatic. I, I decided to move to the UK. In fact, it wasn't the UK before, it was to the US to do my master's. And this happened because I lost my first baby and I just needed a fresh, you know, a fresh environment. I just needed a change of scenery to get over things. And then I just started to apply everywhere. I got two schools in the US. I got scholarships. I got Mm -hmm. a job. I got, okay. you know, jobs that came with scholarships and stipends. Wow. And the embassy just kept telling me, nope. At the time, I had a son as well. My son was, um, I think he was just a year old or almost a year old when I started okay. to, um, you know, explore all these schools. I did start when I lost my first baby. But I got the admissions and everything, and then boom, I got pregnant again. So I said, okay, let me just have this baby before I travel. I had the baby. I still wanted to pursue those dreams because I really saw the potential I could have. Because just by me applying to, you know, so-so and so schools, it's like they are fighting over you kind of feeling. So I said, okay, it looks like I, I need to look into this. So the embassy kept restricting me here and there. And I said, okay, if you will not take me, that's fine. I was just there. A friend sent me a message and said, you know, try the University of Nottingham in the UK. Mm -hmm. They are looking for first class students, blah, 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 blah. I said, okay, fine. I did. And I got in. I got a scholarship. And that was it for me. I I came to the UK when I was seven months pregnant during COVID time. Oh, dear. (laughs) <laughs> and <Okay>. that was <laughs> that's why I said my story is dramatic. So and very interesting. The, exactly. So I I still decided to travel because I felt like you know what I've been putting this down for a long time, yeah. and I've got a scholarship which qualifies me for that particular year, and I got a sec- a second scholarship to top it up. So okay. I said no, I'm not going to let this go because I don't mm-hmm. know when this opportunity will come again. Indeed. So I just jumped on. I, after all my scholarships, all everything, I found that I was pregnant. I said, look, I'm going with this baby. Yeah. And that's how I landed in the UK in 2020, wow. seven wow. months pregnant, knowing nobody here. Oh, so you came alone. I came alone. That's another drama, you know? Wow. <laughs> so I, I just took a bold step. I came alone because my family was going to join me later on, but I... Mm-hmm. I, I came in alone. Yeah. I had the baby and mm-hmm. they came in. So okay. that's how I landed here to do my master's. So wow. just like Victor, I came here with education as well. Education. Yeah. That's interesting. I actually didn't know that both of, I mean, the three of us 
all came in oh, with an education. With education, road. yeah. Very, very, very similar to both of you. I also yeah. got a master's um, in the UK as well uh, mm. with a scholarship, and that is what made me move. And then since then, I've been, uh, I've been away. I've been, I've been uh, away from home. Oh. Okay, so that yeah. is an interesting coincidence. Thank you, you know? both for sharing. <laughs> And if you are joining us, we are welcoming you. Uh, this is Realist Convos with Sewa. And um, I just want to just quickly read out a few comments that are coming in. Um, Nana Madoma says, it's a pleasure to be here. And Rejoice says, wow, that's amazing, Jennifer. <laughs> Indeed, it is amazing. It All is. right. I don't know how I do it, you know. <laughs> I mean, I, I feel like, yeah, as we, as we converse today, we'll go a bit into sort of how, you've, how you experienced it then and mm -hmm. um, maybe some contrast with when you were alone and when the family came yeah. in, um, yeah. because I can imagine that it will be a very interesting experience <laughs> in both a positive and probably negative way to, to some extent. Yeah. Yeah. And also with Victor's, the fact that you, you first moved to Italy, which is not they don't speak english a lot mm -hmm, i don't mm -hmm. know that generally italians speak a lot yeah, of english yeah. and you having an english background how you navigated the whole situation and yeah we are going to get into some things um tonight so if you are here and you are with us just stay put just relax get a glass of water or whatever it is some coffee and and just relax because we are going to delve into some very honest and deeper matters uh, very shortly. So I'll come back to you, Victor. Um, you, you started to tell us about how you had an educational scholarship which allowed you to move. And so with mm -hmm. that, I can imagine that maybe when you were moving, you had a bit of a cushion um, mm -hmm. to, to help you settle in well, because if you have a scholarship and you're coming to a foreign country, I feel like it will be easier than somebody that has nothing and is just like, okay, I have my bag. I'm just coming to see what happens. Um, so tell me, what has been some of the positive experiences, if any, that you've had throughout, not just at the beginning of your, um, of your movements, but also just throughout, because you've been away for close to a decade. Wow. Yeah, well, that's quite a tough question. Um... We are being real here, so I think I would try as much as possible to be realistic in uh, whatever uh, thing that I talk about. So in terms of coming with a cushion, I don't think I came with a cushion. Okay. When I was <laughs> Wrong <moving> assumption. To, <laughs> when I was moving, I was excited, you know, about this whole scholarship thing because mm -hmm. I had tried the scholarship thing for quite a while. And for viewers... We may today say we all have scholarship and all that. It's not that simple. I think I spent a year doing applications and failing. Mm -hmm. It was at the point where I had almost given up that I had a scholarship in Italy. And Italy was not my preferred location to you know, have my mm -hmm. studies. But that was the only one that you know, came true. I'm like, mm -hmm. okay, baby, I a baby. So if this one is going to work, let me just jump to it and then go. Indeed. So what happened was that yeah, it was my first time traveling outside. And there's a person who was, the farthest I've gone was between Accra and then Kumasi. That is it. Yeah. Not beyond Ghana, not even beyond the southern part of Ghana. Mm -hmm. So it was quite um, an interesting journey that I had to take. <laughs> Getting the visa, you know, booking the flights. Uh, those were all hassles that I had to go through that time to get things ready. Yeah. And then, yeah, I just moved. I packed my bags and moved to... Um, jump on the flight with. Unfortunately, the good thing is that for Ghanaians, usually you always find somebody somewhere who is Ghanaian and who is willing to help. So mm -hmm. before I arrived in Italy, I tapped into that network. So somebody was supposed to meet me at the airport. The funny thing is that when I got to the airport, the person was not there. Oh, dear. Wow. <laughs> I was just thing. going to say that. So first tip for everyone who is planning to relocate, regardless of whether you, you seem to have a cushion or not, Networks are important. Get in touch yeah. with somebody. Try and connect with somebody that's already there or someone that has been there before um, because sometimes that helps. But it seems for you, uh, it probably didn't help at the very beginning. Well, the person was 
actually there, but the airport is quite a huge place. Mm -hmm. And I think in Milan, it was an airport and then a train station together. Yeah. So it was a bit confusing. I got out and I didn't know where to stand or where to wait for this person. So I started roaming around the airport, just randomly hoping something will happen. Fortunately for me, after an hour moving here and there, I got a glimpse of the guy and then I like, okay, he raised my hands, he found me and then took me to the place. Oh. So yeah, when you settle, when you get in uh, with a host or somebody who is you know, willing to take you in for at least the first day, okay. it really helps. It really, really helps because it, it mm. gets a bit set, mm. a bit relaxed as to what you can do. At least you get to eat some bread the first day yeah. and then yeah. you figure out the following days on your yeah. own. The thing I realized was that you cannot depend on others around here too yeah, much. Yeah. So yeah. when somebody has tends a helping hand, you really have to make up your mind and look, I'm not going to, you know, take advantage of this kind of help. You really have to move. So a few days you really have to figure out a way for yourself to settle in and then start your own life. Everybody's on their own. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Thanks for sharing. You remind me of my very first day abroad where I, I I came with, I think was it 150 pounds and my shetto and gari. And when I got to the airport, well, I, they, they had told us that students would be there welcoming um, new students and all of that. But I mean, I didn't know anybody. So I just got there and then I'm sure they, they sense, like the immigration people, they sense that this person is like, Johnny just come. The person is now just coming to, <laughs> to, to Abroche. So they, they called me and then they set me aside and then they searched my things and they found my shuttle. And they asked me, okay, so what is this? And I was so excited and I, I started to explain, oh, this is pepper sauce. It's made with this, it's made with that. And they're like, sorry, ma'am, sorry, you cannot take this in. I was like, what? <laughs> like you could see the disappointment on my face because that was the only food I had. And I didn't also have anybody that I was going to, that was welcoming me. So you can imagine my first few days, how it went. Anyways, but please, already you are getting some nuggets. If you are watching us, try and get in touch. Don't be like me. <laughs> try and get in touch with people that are living where you are living, um, but don't just keep riding on them. Know that they are yeah. also doing their best to survive and to yeah. support you. And so also try and find your own footing. Um, thank you very much, Victor, for sharing. I'll come to you now, um, Jenny. Yeah. So I'm um, just... Just, just to add to what Victor was talking about. You know, I mentioned that I didn't have anybody here. It doesn't mean I didn't know anyone. Yeah. I just didn't have any family. Yeah. Here. And like you mentioned about the networking, it's a good thing because I had a friend who was actually born and bred here. Mm. So she met me at the airport and she actually stayed with me for a couple of days. She stayed with That's me for awesome. like three to four days, I think, awesome. if, if my memory serves me right. And, you know, that being said, those of us who are here, I'm coming to bash us. <laughs> if someone needs help, please, since you have that experience, be open to help because yeah. when somebody is traveling for the very first time it's not easy Indeed. so you had we all had some help as you can all hear us talk about so yeah. we should we should you know spread that love if someone needs help and they contact us we should be able to sacrifice that time to help them it's a huge sacrifice yeah. when we go into details in today's chat i'm sure you understand that it's it's a huge sacrifice for someone to leave everything they are doing and come and meet you at the airport stay with you and all that it's a big sacrifice so if someone does that for you be grateful and if someone contacts you please please help yeah. please please help yes yeah oh i think i just took the question away from jenny but i want to add a bit to the help part of it mm -hmm. i think um, it's good that we are all open to help but also it's quite tricky um, I've had instances where people, somebody calls me, I'm like, I want to travel to the Netherlands. Mm -hmm. Can you help me? Or can you host me? Mm -hmm. I'm like, yeah, why not? But what are you coming to do? Yeah. That is where you get to the issue. So the person 
only wants to travel on a, a visit. Mm -hmm. So it takes a three month visa, but the person wants to stay. Mm -hmm. Or the intention of the person is not a visit, yeah. but to move permanently, settle in here, stay, yeah. find a job, and then live a full life here. That's yeah. why it becomes a bit problematic. You can move, but you might put your host also in a very uncomfortable or even legal situation, which mm -hmm. you know will not be ideal for the person. So I think, yeah, as much as you want to help, you also have to know what the person is up to. You have mm -hmm. to be very sure, okay, this person is in for this particular reason and be sure that that is exactly what the person wants to do. Otherwise, you might be the good Samaritan who gets him or herself into trouble. So that is one thing that I just want to point across that. It's good to help, but be very sure that the person that you are Careful. helping is genuine and yeah. what the person yeah. is going to do or wants to do. Sorry, Jenny, yeah. back to you. No, 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 that's fine. That's yeah, indeed, indeed. That's that's a really good point to make because yeah, it's a really good point. Yeah, um, and it's it's all boils down to trust, right? You you yeah. want to be able to establish that trust between yeah. both the person that is now coming and the one that is already there. Um, yeah. And you don't want to jeopardize it in any way because you know it's today that you think that you are um you know you are circumventing some things with the person and lying or withholding some information but later on you might need the person again for some yeah. things and you you'd have already bent that bridge so yeah. um please always be very open and very frank about your intentions because sometimes and people who have lived abroad have a lot of information right at least i do have a lot of information about living in the netherlands and um, things that you need to do and all of that. And sometimes we can actually help you to accomplish whatever motive you have, if you can be open. Um, and sometimes you might not even need to go the, the irregular or illegal route. But yeah. if, you don't, if you don't ask, the answer will always be You never be know. Yeah. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. All right, I think that this is a good segue into my next question. And so I would start with Jenny on this one. We, okay. we all said that we came for educational reasons, mm -hmm. right? But are there particular um, motives for migration which could potentially end in, in a disaster, either for the person moving or for the host, as we are, we are saying now? Because there are so many reasons why people move, right? People move for all sorts of reasons, family mm -hmm. reasons, aside education, for seeking a better life, so to better their, their living and all of that. And I'm just yeah. wondering whether you have any experience with us or if you have anything to share with us on that. Okay, so I may not have a lot of experience, but I've had lots of stories mm -hmm. from people I personally know, people who know people I know and all that. So, um, you know, when you are trying to migrate, there are so many reasons. Some, all of us came here as students, but some also come here as workers. Yeah. So here in the UK, for instance, we have this new visa that has been running for, I think, more than two years now, if I'm right, the healthcare um, visa, yes. where people are coming in to, to work as healthcare providers and all that. So that is there. We also have people who want to, you know, um, start up businesses here in the UK. So there's, there's actually an entrepreneur visa for startups. So there are so many types of visas. There are tourists, you know, there are so many. I mean, if you go on the government's website, you find a lot of them there. There is a tier two for the workers. There is all, even the, um, there is ones that people have to actually like um, give you testimonials and stuff to, to get, you know, straight okay. away, get into um, what do you call this? The leave to remain visa. And there are so many of them, okay? Mm -hmm. You need to know which one you are coming for. But I would I would limit my comment to those who come here as visitors because mm -hmm. from where we come from, most of them would want to come here as a visitor and then try to, you know, melt into the system or vanish, <laughs> whichever one works, you know. Yeah. And that could that could be a disaster because if you are here on a visitor's visa, you can get healthcare in the UK especially, you can get free healthcare at some point mm -hmm. but if they have to refer you for example i mean the healthcare system the sector so 
I and I happen to have my mom here on a visitor's visa as well. So I have first hand information about this. If you come here and let's say your issue is it has to move from primary care mm -hmm. to the bigger hospital, mm -hmm. you are in big trouble because you're gonna pay a lot of money. Mm. That money is I don't know. I paid like um almost eight hundred pounds for my mom. Wow. She was here on a visitor's visa. Mm -hmm. She had to go to, she needed that medical care. Yep. Am I going to sit down and watch her, you know, something happened to her? No way. Yeah. So the doctors will not tell you that when we refer you to this bigger hospitals, you have to pay. They are not going, they are not going to tell you. No. Because that's what happened with me. My mm -hmm. mom had to go into the bigger hospital for urgent care. Mm -hmm. And I later received an invoice that I need to pay for her. And I'm like, she's here on a visitor's visa. We were told she can get free healthcare. We were told this, we were told that. You yeah. need to research as well. Research. Mm -hmm. If you are here on a visitor's visa, there are lots of things that you don't qualify for. Even mm -hmm. when you are legal, there are so many things you don't qualify for. So just mm -hmm. imagine if you are here on a visitor's visa, visitors. it can mm -hmm. be hell for you. Yeah. You can't rent, you can't do this. You can't work. You can't. There are so many things you can't do. You are just limited to just being a visitor. Yeah. So we need to know which type of visa we are coming on. Yeah. What we can and cannot do. Mm -hmm. Do the research. But all of us in Ghana, we we know this common thing that we Ghanaians we we really don't like reading. <laughs> we don't. You need to read and know things for yourself and mm -hmm. know that I'm going on this type of visa. This is what I can do. This is what I cannot do. Before you find yourself in trouble. Because yeah. when you're in trouble, <laughs> ignorance is not an excuse when it comes to the law. Mm. You will be found wanton. So these are some of the things that can end you, land you in those disasters. So you, you just need to be careful what yeah. you are coming to do. Stick to it. If you need to go back home, go back home. Even yeah. though people will tell you there are ways you can, you know, melt in the system and there is there could be but it all comes with money yes so just be be careful just be careful just, just be, be careful. careful because even when you are legal it's not all it's not rosy at all so you being illegal it's it's hell it's not something that you would want to wish on anybody indeed indeed and especially with the health aspects because you just spoke about people that are, are legal, right? So they are visitors, but then see yeah. the, the, the stress they have yeah. to go through yeah. Um, yeah. for healthcare, much less somebody that is, the system doesn't recognize, right? How are you? You know, I, I had a story about somebody who went into the bigger hospital. The person was using somebody's paper, mm -hmm. you know, and unfortunately for this gentleman, he did not know that the person whose paper he was using, that person had died. <laughs> yeah he went into the, you know when you go when you come to the hospital the first thing they'll ask you your date of birth yes so and then they'll ask you your first line of address so they asked for those details he mentioned the date of birth and the person who received it is is like because the mm -hmm. person is dead and this person was <laughs> he's, he's living, living and breathing you know to read reincarnation expression that no i'm okay. getting into trouble here and yeah. They asked him to sit, you know, because they will do all this. They will not arrest you immediately, no. Yeah. So quickly, he realized. So he had to run away. Yeah. You know, yeah. so... Yeah. It's, and it's and now you are going with your sickness, oh. You will go with your sickness. You do. But how will you get treatment? <laughs> yeah. How will you get treatment? Yeah. You know, you will get it, the treatment, but you have yeah. to pay. And aside, if you don't meet, you know, good people, they will mm. immediately call home office. And they, that's when you, you, you don't even get to take your bag. You are probably going home. Yeah. So yeah. you yeah. just need to be careful what visas we are on here with yeah. and what we can and cannot do, basically. Yeah. yeah. Indeed. Thank you so much for sharing. I'll just read out some of the comments that are coming in. People are just loving um, all the nuggets that are coming in. Osayo Kwame Joseph says, loving this convo. Evangelist Ken says, this is quite inspiring and educative. Sweet Maggie, she says, insightful. I mean, people are people are really enjoying the conversations, Grace. But I have a question for you, Jenny. There's a question from Elisa Say, who is my husband. So shout out to Ellis. Um, he says, did your mom apply for a travel insurance from Ghana for her visit? 
why visits and did not did that not cover her medical expenses? expenses. Good question. You see, when I was talking, I made mention of <coughs> reading and doing your research. This is not something I even, you know, yeah. thought about. I did think about healthcare because when the elderly are coming here, they do need, you know, healthcare. You don't know what will happen tomorrow. And uh, when you are aging, a whole lot of, you know, issues. I'm sure you yeah. guys are all aware. But I just... I just limited myself to the reading. Sorry, my light is just messing up. So no I just checked, can she get primary care? Mm -hmm. The GP, okay. and I ended it there. Yeah. The woman, mm -hmm. and I even went forward to even go into um, emergency care center to even ask, can mm -hmm. my mom, who is not a citizen, she's just here on a visit, can she get health care? And they told me, this is free for everyone. So I was like, okay, why not? And I just ended yeah. there. So that's why I kept, you know, stressing on the fact that you need to read and, you know, do your research properly. Mm. My mom didn't have any travel insurance. She could mm -hmm. have had the travel insurance if I had done the research. Mm. You get it. So okay. like we are, we are here talking about our experiences and also to help guide people who want to take the same route. Just yeah. know what you have to do before you come yes. because you, you'll be found wanting if you don't. Basically, yes. that's it. So Alice. Um, that's exactly what happened. I didn't get my mom the travel insurance and yeah. we ended up paying a lot of money. That money could have actually paid for the insurance and she would have had so much, you know, to to um, benefit from that. So, yeah, yeah, indeed. Thank you so much. I, I will move the conversation a bit to, to culture. So, and it's good that we've sort of lived in different places so we can talk about different cultures. Uh, by the way, we are all Ghanaian. So all three of us um, migrated from Ghana. So when you hear us talking about home and maybe mentioning a few um, local dialects, um, speaking in some local dialects, it is um, Ghanaian. So just be aware. Um, how have, have you both managed cross-cultural differences? And uh, I, I remember I read there was this list of things that people British people say and what they actually mean <laughs> and it was so funny to me because I mean I would have never thought that if somebody said um something very very polite and very nice that they actually meant something very negative in real life um and Italians Dutch people all these people have very different cultures so I'm just wondering how have you managed all these uh, sometimes clashes actually in, in culture and uh, trying to either assimilate or just find your own space and thrive within these kinds of societies. And I'll come to you, Victor. Yes, uh, thanks for uh, bringing up the culture question. Personally, I will say, uh, even up to now, I've not been able to manage the cultural issue or the cross-cultural cross, cross -culture differences, uh, even in Milan and even in the Netherlands. I would say I'd rather live through it, but mm. not manage it. Mm. So one of the culture shocks that I confess as opposed to, I mean, aside the language, is the food. Mm -hmm. This might be a bit different in the uh, in the UK because maybe you may have you know better Ghanaian places or African places that you can get mm. some local yeah. stuff. But in Italy, yeah, you think of Italy as having the best pastas and all that. But the first food that I ate in Italy, I was, yeah, I, I didn't like it. It was pesto, something green that I had to eat with pasta. Okay. I don't know if my guy got me the wrong kind of pesto, but it was one of the worst <laughs> food I've ever eaten in my life. <laughs> so, yeah, for me, yeah. one of yeah, the cultural differences is, is food. And aside the food, too, is the social life. Mm -hmm. It's quite very individualistic around here. So mm. each one for himself, and this yeah, each one for himself all the time. So you don't get that kind of social support or cohesion that you would have liked, mm. or that we experience in Ghana. And it gets more difficult yeah. if you are um, like um, a first generation migrant, not the second ones who were born here. But if you move from Ghana to um, any place abroad, then you miss the kind of social life that we had in Ghana. That's yeah. community living, you know, yeah. we are going for a walk, we are going for this or move to a section, you know, those kind of little things that make life, I would say, meaningful, you miss them here because you are not mm -hmm. going to have it. Mm 
Mm. Your life becomes quite robotic. Mm. You wake up, you go to work, you are back. The same routine the next day. You mm. don't have that is the, that is your life, and mm. you don't have any way outside it. You get a few yeah. days of leave, but when you get those kind of leaves, you just don't want to go anywhere because you're so tired. You just I'm want so to tired. Mm. So I think that is one thing that really uh, is different between what we experience here and then what we have or what we had back home, mm -hmm. the culture. And uh, talking about babies, I mean, when you have a baby in Ghana, you have hands that can easily help you, you know, you give you some space to do other things, but yeah, it doesn't work that way. You're on your own, you have to figure everything on yourself and everything. So that's one of the cultural differences that you need to be aware of. Yeah. It's not going to be the same social life, the same, mm -hmm. everybody speaks to you. I've been here for, where I'm living now, I've been here for, I think, two years. Mm -hmm. the apartment that I'm living in. And I don't know my neighbor. My neighbors don't know me. <laughs> we will meet in the elevator or the stairs. We just pass. Nobody greets each other. So that is it. Everybody just lives their life. Nobody yeah. minds anybody. Yeah. So mm -hmm. that's one thing I'll say we should be conscious of. You're not going to get the same social life that you have in Ghana. Yeah. I hope people are listening because sometimes people look at people who are abroad as like the chilling squad. Those who are always just on the move, having these great social lives. And you are hearing here on Realist Convos that sometimes it is not like that at all. Mm, like sometimes, not. even when you have the group, the social um, community that you could be a part of, maybe after, after many years, <laughs> and then finally you find even the time, finding the time to just enjoy yourself, enjoy yeah. the social gatherings is so difficult. Thank you for sharing, Victor. Jenny, yeah. How have you managed your UK people? <laughs> <laughs> so okay, so um, I I I did a little you know research about UK people before like I I I came into this country. I, I like I said I have a friend who was born here, so she tells me stories, you know. So I I spotted some things. So yeah. I wasn't really shocked by some of the yeah. things, and I I I would say I was lucky to, you know, find myself in a shared accommodation where I had British people in my mess. I had two British in my home and they would tell me things. And sometimes I say stuff like, um, you're invited when I'm eating. Mm -hmm. And they'll be like, what do you mean, Jennifer? What do you mean I'm invited? Like, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> I said, so back home, we invite, we are so hospitable as Ghanaians. Yeah. But here it's not like that. Everybody comes into their kitchen, they cook their food, they eat, they go. Mm -hmm. And we tend to greet a lot. Good morning, good afternoon. They are like, oh, hello. And they pass by. You, yeah. you, if you are lucky, you get a hello. Yeah. You just get people passing by you. And I remember a day when I was going for antenatal clinic. I was just walking by the street with my, you know, bump and... This this woman walking towards me, she just looked at me and then just had a funny expression and just crossed the street. And it was it was a mixed feeling. It was funny. I was like, why would you do that? And it was also like, well, that's just her, probably. Maybe she's depressed, <laughs> you know. And I move on. Yeah. There are so many things that will get on your nerves. Mm -hmm. But I don't take it to heart. Yeah. Because sometimes you don't know what people are going through. Indeed. And to be fair, if you have a, um, a child and you have a second, that mm -hmm. second child is now your new baby. And the first is always jealous, right? So yeah. here we are in people's homes, in people's countries. Indeed. It's just human. They feel like you're just coming for what belongs to us kind mm -hmm. of thing. Yeah. You know, so I just don't take it to heart. I, yeah. I just move on. But yeah. like I said, I had, there are ones that will do that to you, but there are also friends that you make for a lifetime. So, you know, it's just an individual thing. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yes. The social yeah. life, though, there is no social life. There <laughs> isn't, unless you create it for yourself, there yeah. is no social life. You end up just working, 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 and that's it. No fun. Yeah. So you need yeah. to create that thing for yourself. If you don't, then, you know, you'll okay. just be bored to death. Yeah. There's something yeah. that you said that I just want to reiterate, but because it's very important that um, there are 
people that would always act in a particular way towards foreigners. Mm -hmm. uh, if you if you encounter such people, just yeah, find a way to to um, not let it get to you so much yeah. because it is life. We yeah. all have our excesses. We all have yeah. our shortcomings. Probably that is theirs, you know. So keep it as that and just move on with your life. Don't let it get you depressed because if you yeah. do that, A, then in this somebody's country, you always be you depressed. Can't, you can't live here, honestly. And the other you thing can't. also is that in as much as there are so many people that, um, there are people that behave in such manners, there are also others that are extremely kind, sometimes even kind to a fault. And there are also those people that have had the the blessing to have met amazing people here who I can even say that are even um, more hospitable than people that I have experienced back at home. So yeah. there, there is always that mix, you know, so just find, find your tribe, right? When you come here, well, I like that. Tribe. find your tribe. Yeah. And, and just, and just vibe with them and, and just go your way. All right. Otherwise depression is real. It but is. one thing that they both said, both Victor and Jennifer said, there's no social life. So if you want a social life, you have to be intentional about creating it, yeah. making yeah. time for it. And how do you make time for it? And I think that that helps. That is a very good um, also a point to just move on to um, perhaps our last question, which I would ask both of you. So both of you would um, respond to the same question. And then we'll go to the fun part, which I'm waiting for. Um, so, do you have any advice for Africans that are living abroad on how they can thrive here? Because like Jenny said, Jenny has been here since 2020. Myself, I have been, I've been in and out since 2012. Um, and Victor also uh, since around 2013, you've yep. also been outside. So you have a lot of nuggets. Mm -hmm. What advice? How are you thriving? How are you not just surviving? Because we, we don't want survival here. We're less convos. We are growing constantly. So we want to thrive. How, how are you doing it? What are some of the things that you're doing so that others can also learn? People that are planning to relocate and people that are already here and they are struggling, maybe they are, they've just accepted that this is how life is supposed to be mm. outside. Um, but yeah, others are probably yeah. doing it differently. So yes, maybe we start from Jenny. Okay. So the first thing I would say is don't settle. Mm. Don't settle because um, when you come to this, you know, the West or wherever you find yourself, you think, oh, this is so hard. You, you already have an expectation when coming in. You think that there are so many, there are so many opportunities. There is this, there is that. There's fun from the movies we see, but it just remains there. The movies. It's just, yeah. it's all you know, an act. And remember, you are not a citizen here. This is not your home. Okay, but at the same time, do not settle. There are there are so many things here you can do for yourself. Yeah. When I came in, I was pregnant, like I said, but I wish I had a job mm. because things start to get real very fast. Yeah. Very quickly, like in a twinkle of an eye, things start getting real and you want, you want things to do. So you just want to do anything you find. Mm -hmm. I'll tell you, after having my baby, um, three months or maybe less than three months after I had my baby. I was working in a warehouse mm. and it was crazy moments. I, out of my 24 hours, I spent 16 hours or more outside the home. Yes, wow. I have a newborn. Okay. Mm. I'm going to the warehouse doing a 12 hour shift. I travel like almost two hours to get to work, almost two hours to come back home. And when you come back home, you have to breastfeed. You have to, while at work, I'm already pumping. So I have to keep them in the fridge, come back home, sort things out, clean, do this, do that. And then I have to try and go back to sleep, sleep a little bit and wake up again. The cycle continues. Okay. Yeah. And you are just, you are just so scared. You get discouraged uh, quickly because people would not want to give you the job, especially when they hear you talk and they'll know that you are new here 
or mm. you are not from here. Mm. So then some of us, it's just, it's just, you know, it, it, it gets you down. Yeah. Naturally, it will get you down, but don't settle. Mm. You are capable of doing anything they are capable of doing. In fact, if not more. Yeah. So do not settle for less. Mm. Believe in yourself. Yeah. And just go for it. Okay. Mm. That being said, it's not just office work you can do. Mm. There are so many opportunities. Yes, it's true, but you need to find them. It's just covered. Just try and discover them. Like Sewa and I, we are digital business owners. That is one way you can yeah. thrive. Yeah. I discovered this business last year. I wish mm. I found it when I was pregnant. I wouldn't have gone through all those warehouses. I, at a point, I was doing like three jobs. Oh because my you God. have to live. New you mom. Have to yeah, live. you have to live. You have to live. And you're not thinking about yourself. You're thinking about your children. I Indeed. mean, you can go hungry, but you can't let your children go hungry. You can't let your children, you know, go without clothing. Yeah. And you, as children, they grow really fast as well. Yeah. So you think, oh, I got clothes just last week. In fact, with my children and my own experience, by the following week, they have outgrown their clothes because they are tall and they, are, they have body and all that. You understand? So they grow so fast. They yeah. grow very fast. So... There are so many things you can, we can give you all the advice, but the thing is, are you ready to listen as well? Because yeah. sometimes people think that, oh, no, it's mm-hmm. not that. Some people have been through where, where you are or been through what you are going through. If they are giving you advice, I'm not saying if anybody gives you any advice, just take it. But just yeah. weigh, weigh yeah. your options. You know, research yourself. And I keep saying this research thing because seriously, you can't just take what everybody says. Somebody mm-hmm. can tell you, oh, and a, a, a table topic, you may be high and also come when you end up doing so many, you'll be breaking your back. And at the end of the day, you stress yourself. You might die quickly because stress yeah. kills. And yeah. we don't see it kill. Stress kills even more than AIDS and all those COVID and things that we know. I'm telling you, stress really kills. So yeah. take your time. Don't settle. Just do your research, upgrade yourself. This is a video I saw of a lady talking about how someone was talking about how you can let you can earn 16 pounds an hour or 20 pounds an hour, and everybody was bashing the person saying, Which part of UK are you? It actually can happen. But mm. are you remaining at where you are? Mm. Are you are you staying in that comfort zone? Mm-hmm. As long as you're able to pay your bills and you get some small coins to send back home, you think that's it. That's not it. Mm-hmm. You're not living. You're surviving. Yeah. We don't yeah. want you to survive. Thrive. Yeah. yeah. Find things to do. Yeah. Find things to do for yourself, for your children, for, you know. And you can talk to people whom you've seen doing things and you think that they are succeeding. You can seek people's advice. You can actually go to your bosses and ask them, how did you get here? And you yeah. know one thing about I like about these people, when you ask them questions, you engage them, they openly and freely tell you a lot of things. That's true. It also depends how you communicate with them. You will get a lot of ideas, how they manage, because they didn't just get up and become a manager. No. That whom you know thing we have in our countries, it's not really common here, though I know it's here as well. Yeah. It's not really common here where, oh, my dad knows this person, so they put you here. No. So ask ask questions, get to know how things are done, and Mm. just emulate. If you can't beat them, just copy them. It's simple. Mm. You get it, but copy the right things yeah you know yeah. great great nuggets thank you so much don't settle don't settle you know sometimes and we are trained back at home that education is like the path to success and so we go to all the school like some people have three or four master degrees uh, two phds and all of that and you realize that even after all those accolades and all those um certificates when at the end of the month you see your paycheck it, it's good right it's it's a decent um, income it's it's a decent salary but after you calculate your bills and all the different deductions you realize that okay you need to think <laughs> fast and think yeah. hard uh, so yeah. that you can thrive and um, jenny has told us don't stay in your comfort zone yeah move out explore find out what are people doing to survive yeah. and how are people here thriving just ask questions and when you get advice listen 
people who have gone ahead of you, when they tell you something, listen, do your due diligence, yeah. do your research. Yeah. And if you find that it is the thing for you, just invest in yourself, take a chance on yourself and just check it out. See what it will offer you. You never know. Thank mm -hmm. you so much for sharing, Jenny. Victor. I think Jenny has said it all. Mm. Oh. <laughs> but, <laughs> well, what I would add is um, you also have to, well, how do I put this? Um, whatever you get your hands on, do it diligently. Mm. Yeah. Because that will be what will open the next opportunity for you. Indeed. Yeah. So the environment is not very welcoming, but people see people who have who work hard and yeah. people can identify talents or abilities that you have. Mm. So mm. no matter what job you get yourself into, put your all into it. Mm. Usually that's what we do. At times we work and we don't even realize what we are doing, but people mm. really recognize and people look at what we are doing every time yeah. that we get ourselves into an activity. So yeah, that would be my first advice if you're already living here, mm. is to keep focused on your, what you're doing, do it with all your ability, yeah. and that will be the step to get you into the next opportunity. Mm. The second thing is, is not to overthink mm. too much. Mm. It's good to plan. There are times I feel we worry ourselves too much when we try to look too much into the future. Mm. Plan by look at planning more like in a short term at time. It's good to have a long term plan, but don't overburden yourself trying to figure out everything that will happen yeah. in two, 10 years. You're just going to put yourself under unnecessary pressure, mm. unnecessary depression, unnecessary comparison with others. Stay in your lane, do the best that you can and uh, take it a day by day. The last thing that I would add is to stay away from trouble. You don't want to get into trouble in a country that you don't know any police, so you don't know you don't know any chief who will stand <laughs> in for you. So, you don't yeah, know any boss. <laughs> you don't know any boss. So yeah. yeah, that is one thing that I also say we should um, make sure we keep that um, in our minds to stay away from any form of trouble be it mm. drugs or there are things that you know okay this can get me into trouble i would mm. advise to really avoid that because yeah. when the law gets you there's no way you can go around it they're already looking for you out there so if you yeah. put yourself in their hands that will not be a pleasant thing for you so yeah the first thing whatever you're doing do it well yeah. um, mm. the third thing stay out of trouble what did i say for the second i think i forgot don't overthink don't, don't overthink. Exactly. So those are the three things that I will say you should, um, you know, take as an advice if you're living here. It will help yeah. you to drive. Yes. At least it has helped me to drive in some moments, not all the time. Because at times you can't just avoid the overthinking because, okay, the baby... <laughs> the, the, the next one is coming. You have to think. <laughs> yeah, you really have to think. And uh, yeah, but what I realize is that at times you just worry yourself overthinking. Yeah, yeah. Especially on things you can't do anything about. Exactly. You don't have control over it. Mm. So just focus yeah. on what you have now. Do it well. And that will lead you the next opportunity. So that will be the yeah. advice. Awesome. 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 Thank you so much. Keep your focus. Right? Yeah. In as much as you are thinking about the future and you are planning ahead, you have something in your hand. If you have something in your hand now, do it with all your might. I, I read one quote that said that um, if even if you are sweeping, just sweeping, yeah. um, sweep in sweeping. such a way that heaven will say that, wow, there was once a man who lived, who swept, like the way Michelangelo did whatever it is that he did. What you know, so mean? just do it with all your minds. Do it as unto God and not unto man. Yeah. And yeah. then see. You'll be surprised. The little yeah. things that you think that, oh, maybe I'm just doing my best and I'm just doing what I can. People yeah. see. And one day you'll be talking and they'll be talking about the things you are doing. And you're like, were you watching all this while? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I've, I've had it several times here in my career that sometimes I'm, I'm really baffled at the little things that people notice. All right. So that's very important. Don't overthink. That's yeah. really, really important. 
live each day, like enjoy each day in as much as we are planning ahead. Make sure that in a day, at the end of the day, when you look back into the day, you are fulfilled that you did at least one thing that brought you fulfillment, right? Yeah. Stay yeah. away from trouble. That I cannot say enough. <laughs> I cannot say enough. You know where you're coming from. Oh. Yeah, you know. So, <laughs> you know that there are binoculars are on you like something. So I'm telling you. Stay <laughs> away from trouble. God bless you. Thank you so, so much for coming. Um this is it. There are there are so many, so many comments that are coming in. Which I say is love that. Don't settle. Um, and she says that great things happen when you move out of your comfort zone. Indeed. And I am a living testimony of that. Um, Ellis says, copy the right things. Very, very important. And Joseph says, one day at a time, a day at yeah. a time. Just keep at it. Yeah. Day, tomorrow, the next day, by the time you realize progress is yeah. just happening like that. Thank and you know, you. Kwame, that's how I did it. You know, mm -hmm. combining my master's with a pregnancy, having a newborn. I did it a day at a time. Mm -hmm. and and you know my my professors were like jenny when i went for graduation they were so excited they said jenny how did you you are a superwoman how did you do it and yeah. you know it's just a day at a time i'm no yes. superwoman it's just wow. a day at a time and with the help of god as well yes. so yes yes awesome 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 okay so now we've come to the end of our discussions on Going beyond the hype of Abruchu, Yekwa Abruchu, Abruchu for normal day, they have everything. And we have broken it down very simply for you. But I hope we are taking all the nuggets today. But before we go, I just have a little game that I want to play with my guests tonight. Um, so don't log off yet. <laughs> this, this is going to be fun, I can assure you. Uh, so we are I'm, going I'm to play for this game. I don't know what this game is about. Let's see. <laughs> I have no idea. Uh, so this is going to be a this or that, okay. which is basically just two options. And they have to choose one of them. It can be both or neither. They okay. have to choose one of them. So we'll start very simple and we'll go into hard and then we'll end with some fun ones. Mm. So, okay, let's see. <laughs> are you ready? Let's go. Yeah, let's go. All let's right. do this. So, Victor. Mm -hmm. Cats or dogs? Dogs, simple. Mm. Mm. Very simple. Dogs. <laughs> you, you, you look like a dog person. <laughs> okay. Jenny, Fufu or Rice? Rice. Oh, you're my girl. <laughs> rice, rice all the way. Victor, night or morning? Night. Definitely night for you. <laughs> Jenny, there's one there. Mm. Messy or tidy? Tidy. 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 Ronaldo. <laughs> 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 All right, so now we are going a bit into the hard ones. Okay, let's see. Okay, Victor, success or happiness? Okay. <laughs> uh, I'll go for success because success is happiness. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> let's leave it at that. Yeah. Jenny, painful truth or comforting lie? Painful truth. Mm. Always. Yeah, Always. Yeah. Hits it's me difficult, with it. so, but... It is, but hit me. Hit me. Mm. Painful truth, yeah. Mm. Okay, okay. And yeah, sometimes it, it can be too painful, though. <laughs> See, it's just painful, I prefer the like, comfortable lie. Charlie. <laughs> no, it's, painful. it's painful, but, like, at least I know the truth. Mm. Indeed. At Indeed. least I know the truth, and I can learn from it if I have to. So, painful yeah. truth always. Yeah. Okay. Quick, okay, Andrew says, "Fufu on any day." Hey, you're so full. <laughs> wow. Okay. Yeah, before, before the, yeah, yeah. We are moving on. That's a logical emotion. I feel like I know this one. Yeah, logic definitely. <laughs> is, is it a gender thing? I think gender. I don't think, I don't think it's a, a gender thing because I would also go with logic. With logic, okay. yeah. When the babies are there, the women oh, I would go me. with logic. Logic. 
Sure. You when know, we put the pen and paper down, we are calculating things. It's logical. <laughs> it's mm. not emotion. Yeah, okay. Putting them together to make sure that they balance. <laughs> There's no emotion. Mm. Okay. Money or love, Jenny? I'll choose money. Money. It's Sky Listen, or I dog. want to ask Victor too. That's Sky or dog. Simple. <laughs> the guy or dog. God said that... love is the greatest too. That mm. one is there. Love is the greatest, yes. But see, <laughs> Masa, who needs God? Then I'll see. Money. Hey, hey, hey. Easy says money, 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 money. All the oh, ones that are in favor of money, please write money, money, money. Wow. I haven't seen any love in the comments. Okay. <laughs> Sweet Maggie. <laughs> Victor, working hard or hardly working? Hardly working. Hardly working? <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. Hey, Joseph says love in capital letters. Hey. Right. Thank you, my brother. <laughs> we have one. Victor, hardly working. Hardly working. The games to enjoy. We are born to enjoy the soft yeah. life, people. <laughs> Who wants to break their back, my friend? Exactly, <laughs> Charlie. I mean, there are hard jobs that you can take, but there are also sub jobs that we could pay you like the hard job that you're doing. So, come find well, a I job. Think we can, hardly working. We can also say hardly working is also smart working. Smart yeah. working. Yeah. So it's always yeah. hardly working. Smart. Hey, yeah. of course, I put you on a blender. No? Yeah, well, not blend out. But we are all in the soft life. No hassle. Yeah, Boma, you can't use blender. Hey, this is working hard. My sister. Okay. Okay. Oh. Okay. Andrew says working hard. Okay. Oh, that is for you. Okay. Yeah, this one is an interesting one. Bad breath or body odor. Chai. <laughs> I hope this, this one is not mine. This one. <laughs> oh goodness! Please, oh. whose who's, who's turn is it? It's I think mine. it's Jenny. It's mine. Yeah. It's my Jenny. turn. Hey, Jenny, this is this very one. difficult too. This one is very very difficult. I know. My, my, sweet Maggie, none of the sweet above. Maggie, none of the above. I, I can't choose none of the above too. No, so, it's not an option. Anyway, I, I will just go with bad order because that one I can turn my, you know. <laughs> Your hair. <laughs> you, you don't need to smell it. <laughs> I know, right? I can hold my breath. <laughs> but it's a difficult one. It is, it is. Victor, speeding tickets or parking tickets? I, I feel like more, I know this one for you. It's more likely going to be a speeding ticket. Speeding tickets? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> Jenny, beauty or brains? Why don't you say beauty with brains? Well, <laughs> doesn't go well, together. Well. <laughs> okay, um, I'll say brains. Brains. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That's from a woman's perspective, though. I'll go for beauty. From a man's perspective, though. Mm. <laughs> see, uh, people yeah. agree with me. You see, when they. <laughs> Beauty hey, people, and brain. People Beauty. in the chat are saying bad breath is better oh, because at least you I can cover with gum. That one is better. <laughs> you can cover with gum. Anyway, yeah, at least with so, bad breath, I you can know. tell the person to stop speaking. Hey, oh, are I'm you sorry. sure? <laughs> <laughs> all right. So the very last one. Okay. I feel like we are all biased on this one. Doing a master's home or abroad. Um. Who's, who's turn is it? I think it's it's my uh, I yeah. think abroad any day, and that's because of um, you know the experience that I had. You are kind of pushed to learn on your own. Exactly. Whilst I realized back home, we we're being fed. Okay, there are handouts, mm. lecture notes, and yeah. All that. The first time that I started reading articles was when I started the masters, and it was a big shock. You had to read like three or four articles before a class in a day. And I had never done that before. Yeah. So you get to learn things on your own, know things on your own. Yeah. yeah it makes you a better 
after that makes than uh, yeah. the approach that we have. And I don't blame our, our approach because with the numbers, that's also the best that we can do. But mm. ideally, it's much better abroad in terms of the methods and how they uh, go with the uh, teaching um, approaches. Yeah. 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 I always, I always say this. I always feel like everybody, um, at least in, uh, in Africa, should try, well, with the exception of South Africa, <laughs> should uh-huh. try to at least get an educational experience abroad. And it, it doesn't need to be a full-fledged program like a master's or a PhD or mm. something. Like, it could just be a course, like a, a, a three-week course or something like sure. that. Yeah. Because it, it takes you outside of your comfort zone. Again, mm. coming back to just going outside of your comfort zone, it exposes you to different ways of learning. Yeah. Right, so it exposes yeah. you to different people, different styles, and you get to learn, just grow a bit better. So, with that, that is the end of our conversation today. And I hope that it's been real for all of you that have been watching us. It has definitely been real for me today, um, listening and also learning so much from our guests. So, thank you once again, Jenny and Victor. Um, like we said Mm -hmm. at the very beginning, both Jenny and myself are business owners and Jenny, I don't know if you want to put your handles out there for people that want to move out of their comfort zone and want to, um, probably also follow you to learn some more, um, from you. Okay. So, um, like you rightly know by now, my name is Jennifer, but my handles, you can find me on Jenny Digital by Jennifer Adu. So I'm on Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, um, TikTok as Jenny Digital by Jennifer Adu. And my website is www.jenniferadu.com. You can also reach out by just chatting me or finding me on Facebook or anywhere you want to chat me and I'm, I'm happy to help. Thank you. And this has proudly been brought to us by Sewa Ampa for consulting. And of course, you can also reach out to me if you're interested in starting your own digital business or you want to just talk about how you can just earn multiple streams of income and on the side. And you can go to my website also. It's www.sewa-ampafo.nl or just reach out on my Facebook page and I'm happy to engage in a conversation with you. Thank you to our guests. It's been amazing. Thank you to all the people, our viewers, who have stayed with us throughout this one hour and a little over. Sorry that we ran a bit over, but I hope that you have found this as educative and fun as I have. Thank you and see you all next week. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye.